Hi guys! It's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. Today's video, we are going to make an update about the business of this uh, aquatic shops, this uh, pet store. And another thing is that we will make an update also about the tank preparation because we are about to load another batch of fish in the mud pan. And before we're gonna load these fingerlings of this uh, Japanese koi and goldfish and even the smallies, we have to make some tank preparation. In our last video, we made a good harvest of the several types of goldfish and carps from the mud pile. And I am so happy with this progress because I really intended to have a massive production of this uh, goldfish and even this carp and other live bearer fish because many of you really would like to avail our fish. Well, as of the moment, our local market here in our place in Buanga City can consume immediately our fish. So the, the demand is really high that we cannot afford to sell our fish outside in our place, in, in the city. So that is why I really have tried to, to make a mud pot. And uh, the massive production of this kind of fish will only become possible if we have a grow out tank, which is the mud pot. And this has been my experience over the past uh, few months it proves to me that mud pan really is a good grow out tank really for any kind of tropical fish. So I'm really very inspired because some of the fish that we have harvested from the mud pan are already here inside in the aquariums. Well, we are inside in this pet store, the Dexter's World Pet Shop, and this is the second branch of our pet store. The main branch is located there at Sokabon. It is uh, within the town proper that is why we are paying high rentals and this place is quite remote from the city proper but this is already our own we are not anymore paying rentals and this is the good news that i can share with you that you can achieve more things in life you can be successful if you are if you are just uh, going to persevere and come out victorious every time that we are faced with circumstances I'm so excited because as you can see in these aquariums, we have so many healthy fish. Over here we have this uh, Japanese koi and it is our schedule to clean the aquarium so that this fish will not become sick. And over here also the, the center aquarium of this pet store. This tank is actually big and as you can see, the goldfish that we have harvested are even chasing and they're breeding. So if you wanted to avail of our breeders, you can just come here and uh, buy some of our fish. And let me give you some tips if you are really interested to also have a pet shop or aquatic shop like this. Well, we have to make it sure that our tank is presentable. And how to make our tank presentable, of course, we will provide good lightings. And I'm going to recommend that we are going to use the daylight lamps. You will see here, they are so beautiful, very beautiful to look at. Well, I have to tell you that if you are a hobbyist and you have an aquarium inside your home, this gives us some uh, therapeutic effect. It eases the problem, you know, it gives us good vibes. And this is what I have experienced over the past 20 years. So this is not just a fish. It helps us cope our, you know, problems and even issues in life. So you look at here, these are all breeders and you will also see that we have this uh, small Japanese koi. They are the fingerlings of our Japanese koi and also we have this uh, orandas. inspired you to engage in this kind of business because uh, this business will not entail big capital if you are going to raise your own stocks 
and uh, it's been my experience also that if you are only diligent enough to breed, you will not spend more capital. Your capital will be your effort in producing all these types of fish. So this is actually what is happening now. I was able to purchase some properties because of our income as a pet shop operator, pet shop owner. And uh, in the past, I also have engagement with some people in the islands because they are also selling this uh, kind of fish and they are and they are buying my fish by bulk so that is why I said that I'm going to really inspire you if you are into this kind of hobby you can make this hobby into profit as I always uh, mentioned in my previous videos so guys as you can see at my back we have here some filters and uh, we have the submersible pumps, we have this air pumps, we have this koi food, and also this electromagnetic pump. These are the, the life of the fish. It's my experience that if we are going to make sure that we will become successful in our business, such as like this, we have to provide our customers with the basic, the basic apparatus or equipments that are needed inside the aquarium. Aside from that, the good business when you have this kind of shop is the selling of the fish foods. Yes, because if they're gonna buy fish from you, they will come back and, you know, bring some fish foods. And uh, these fish foods are really also very lucrative. And uh, one of the things that I did before was to sell live foods. I go to the river or the canals or the rice field and I am selling also live food to our customers. So these are the things that I did and uh, it made me become successful and it expanded our community of fish lovers here in our place. So now we will go to the farm because it is our schedule to dry up the farm and put some new water in preparation for thousands of fish that we can load at the mud pan. I'm so glad because just this morning I received a call from our customers and they are willing to buy all our fish. That is why I could no longer sell our fish from the outside buyers because here in our community alone we really have this high demand of fish and this is my encouragement. If you are thinking about business and you cannot find a good one, maybe this uh, fish keeping is one of the things that you can consider. So guys, I am very happy about this development because I see that our fish are so healthy. Though some of them have not grown big, but I am very contented with the kind of condition that they have here in this conditioning tank. Actually, we have four big conditioning tanks and the measurement of each tank is actually 12 feet by 12 feet. So this is a perfect square and maybe you will wonder why we did not use the oxygen or the air pump or even this uh, filtration system. Well, I would like to say something about this, that the filtration system will no longer be needed if you are going to regularly put new water in your tank. And this particular tank, we normally add 50% of the water every day. And 50% of the old water will just be flushed out. And every day we are sure that the water condition is really good. So this is the method that we have employed. We regularly add 
new water. And I believe that after a couple of days from now, we're gonna be able to dispose the bigger ones and maybe we can regrow the smaller ones. We will throw back the smaller ones to the mud pond. So guys, we are here beside the two mud ponds and in our previous videos, you witnessed how we harvested our fish and we really had a good harvest. I am so happy about the result of this mud pond because we have a good harvest. Though I will say that it is not really good to mix the carp and this goldfish. This is the lesson that I have learned to not mix the goldfish from the carp. So what we will do now is to put the goldfish, all the goldfish right here, separate from the carps. That area there is intended for our Japanese koi. And we have employed so many processes before we gonna put again new stocks of fish in the mud pan. And one of which is the, the drying up of this mud pan. As you can see over there, the mud pan is already dried up. And the purpose of drying up is to ensure that there are no predators that are left behind because if we're gonna put new stocks of fish and we are not sure about the conditions of the pond maybe there are still predators that are uh, left behind then that would cause a failure because all these predators would just eat up all the small fishes I am saying this because we have just caught some mud fish that are the culprits of eating our fish, some of our fish. We could have harvested more fish had these uh, predators, these mud fish, did not eat the fry of this uh, Japanese koi and goldfish. So this is actually very important. And we are now adding water over this particular pan because at home we have so many stocks of this goldfish. I think it reached about four or 5,000 goldfish that are waiting to be transferred here in this mud pan. And you will see that we already have the algae. The algae was caused by the chicken dung that we have placed right here. A few days ago, we placed the dried chicken dung in order to generate the algae. And then we will put some new water. And after three days, that's the time that we are ready to put all the baby fish right here. And one of the things that maybe you are interested to know about is how did we dry this up? Well, to tell you honestly, we don't have canal or any drainage system here because this particular pond is the catch basin. This is uh, lower than this rice field. So we really have a problem of draining the water or drying this up. So just yesterday, we went to the hardware and we bought some industrial submersible pump. This industrial submersible pump is highly recommended. I highly recommend that you will use this industrial submersible pump to dry up our pan. And this submersible pump is one half horsepower and it has the capacity of extracting water, uh, 2,000 liters of water per 2,000 liters of water per 30 minutes. This is really a powerful pump that can dry this up in less than three hours. There are basic do's and don'ts in using this pump. Number one is we don't allow this to operate for more than three hours. And number two is we are going to make a strainer. It's really very dangerous if we will just put this directly to the pan without making some nets to strain this uh, fibers or some objects that will destroy this particular machine. So I am very encouraged to concentrate on the growing of this uh, 
several types of fish. Uh, maybe in the next video, we can show you how we're gonna load some live bearers because I know that the live bearers are also best to be grown in the mud pan. I'm very confident now that our business of selling this uh, ornamental fish will really thrive. It will really grow because we have already our own produce. It's very expensive to order this from other places or to import this from other countries because it entails big budget and it entails expenses especially in the freight and other incidental expenses. But if you have a system like this, you have bred your fish, you have grown your fish, and you have the place where to condition it, well, this is already a good system that can support a very good business. So guys, you will see that we already have dried this uh, bigger mud pond and we are now preparing this for another batch as what I have mentioned and our way of preparing is to put some organic uh, fertilizer and we use the dried chicken dung for the production of the algae we will throw some dried chicken dung all over we will spread all over this pond and then we will allow that to stay for for three or five days and then afterwards we will put in new water and then we will wait for another couple of days and that's the time that we're gonna be ready for putting the new stocks of fish in this uh, particular pan. So we already have done this and you will see that the water is already green. Two days from now, we will load some 3,000 goldfish right here. So the lesson that I have learned is not to mix the goldfish and the carp. So this particular area will be the place where goldfish and the Japanese koi will occupy in this particular area. So guys, these are the, the mad fish that became predators to our goldfish and our Japanese koi. So we will get them. I will try to crossbreed this with our mud fish right home. We have African Hito there at home and maybe we can cross this one. So we will catch them all and put them inside the plastic. We look at them, they are really fast. So thank you guys for always being with me in my quest to give some information and basic basic knowledge about how this farming is going on and thank you because we are now approaching 1 million subscribers maybe in the month of April or May we are gonna reach the 1 million subscribers and I owe a lot this to you guys thank you for your support and thank you for always sharing and uh, watching our videos and allow me also to promote our second channel the second channel is called love drive and I will provide the link below. You may also visit and if you like what we are doing in the particular channel, may I invite you also to please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you will be updated of the new videos that we are going to upload. So I am very thankful for your support and I would like to ask you if you are not subscribed to Dexter's World, please subscribe also here and I will see you in our next video. We are uploading videos every five days. Only here. Dexter's World